Battle of the Planets is an American adaptation of the Japanese anime series Science Ninja Team Gatchaman Of the 105 original Gatchaman episodes, 85 were used in the Battle of the Planets adaptation, produced by Sandy Frank Entertainment. The adaptation was generally faithful to the plot and character development of the original Gatchaman series, but significant additions and reductions were made in order to increase appeal to the North American television market of the late 1970s, as well as avoid controversy from parents. These included the removal of elements of graphic violence and profanity. As of June 2013, Sentai Filmworks have licensed the Gatchaman franchise. An oft-delayed CGI film based on the franchise, Gatchaman, last slated for a 2011 release from Warner Bros., was officially cancelled in June 2011. However, a live-action Gatchaman feature film was released in Japan in August 2013. As of 2018, the series has been made available for streaming on Hydev. <laughs> Origins. In April 1977 Sandy Frank attended the MIP TV conference in Cannes. It was here Frank first encountered the Japanese animation Gatchaman from producer Tatsunoko production run by the Yoshida brothers. Frank committed to release the series in the US after he saw the success of Star Wars in May 1977. Battle of the Planets is the title of American adaptation of this series created by Frank. Frank authorized new footage and hired writers to add dialogue to fit the look of the animation, without reference to original scripts. Of the 105 original Gatchaman episodes, 85 were used in the Battle of the Planets adaptation produced by Sandy Frank Entertainment in 1978. <laughs> Summary Battle of the Planets cast five young people as G-Force, consisting of Mark, Jason, Princess, Kiop, and Tiny. G-Force protects Earth from the planet Spectra and other attacks from beyond space. The most prominent field commander of the Spectra forces was a villainous, masked individual known as Zoltar. Zoltar would receive his orders directly from a being he would refer to as the Luminous One. The Luminous One would appear as a ghost-like, disembodied, floating head. Who, or what this being actually was, is never explained in any detail throughout the series. The main ship of the G-Force team was called the Phoenix, which could carry, transport and deploy four smaller vehicles, each operated by one team member. The four vehicles included a futuristic race car with various hidden weapons driven by Jason, this vehicle was concealed within the Phoenix's nose cone. The Galacticycle a futuristic motorcycle princess road, was stored within the left-wing capsule of the Phoenix. Kiep's space bubble, an all-terrain, tank-like vehicle capable of VTOL as well as being a submersible craft, was held in the right storage capsule of the Phoenix. And lastly, a futuristic jet fighter Mark Pilots was stored in the top rear section of the Phoenix command island structure, and which used its tail fin to make up the center tail fin of the Phoenix. The fifth crew member, Tiny, was assigned to pilot the Phoenix rather than one of the detachable craft. A regularly featured plot device was the transformation of the Phoenix into a flaming bird-shaped craft able to handle virtually any exceptional situation by functioning as a sort of giant, super blowtorch called the Fiery Phoenix. The Phoenix's primary weapon was a supply of rockets called TBX missiles in the series. It also occasionally flaunted a powerful solar-powered energy blaster, although the team had the misfortune of choosing very cloudy days to use it. The G-Force team themselves would use a combination of martial arts skill, ninja-like weapons, and their cerebonic powers to dispatch hordes of enemy soldiers and overcome other obstacles. Their bird-like costumes include wing-like capes that could fan out and function nearly identically to parachutes and or wing suits, enabling the G-Force members to drift or glide down to safety from heights which would otherwise prove fatal. The G-Force members stay in contact through a wristband communicator device which also serves as a way for them to change instantly into their G-Force uniforms or back into their civilian clothes. 
Other weapons seen displayed by various team members include, Mark's sonic boomerang, a bird-shaped boomerang with razor-sharp wings, Jason's and Tiny's multi-purpose gadget guns, which can be outfitted with grappling hook and line, drill bits, etc., and Kiep's and Princess's yo-yo bombs, which could be used as bolus, darts, and explosive devices. Other weapons include feathers with a sharpened steel quill that could be used as deadly throwing darts, and mini grenades shaped like ball bearings with spike studs. <laughs> <laughs> Subsequent versions In 1986, Gatchaman was reworked in the US as G-Force, Guardians of Space by Turner, with a good deal of the original content edited out a Battle of the Planets put back into the show. It followed the plot of the original Gatchaman much more faithfully than Battle of the Planets because of this. Missing was Hoyt Curtin's original score. New voice acting was used. This version, however, was criticized by fans of both Gatchaman and Battle of the Planets, and never achieved the same level of popularity. Two soundtrack albums and several DVDs have been released. The two Japanese follow-up series, Gatchaman 2 and Gatchaman Fighter, were combined into 65 episodes and released as the Saban-produced show Eagle Riders. All 65 episodes aired in Australia, but in the United States only 13 episodes were aired. Topic: <laughs> Key changes in the adaptation. The Battle of the Planets adaptation differs significantly from Gatchaman. The difference is due to heavy editing made to make the show appealing to the audience in the United States by removing controversial elements i.e. graphic violence, profanity, nudity and transgenderism while adding elements reminiscent of the feature film Star Wars, which was popular at the time. In fact the name, Battle of the Planets, was an attempt to associate itself with that popularity of Star Wars. While the original Gatchaman was earthbound, dark-toned, and environmentally themed, the adaptation morphed it into a child-friendly outer space show with robot characters, although some environmental themes were kept, and this is also why the other planets to which G-Force traveled on missions looked very much like Earth. Setting, violence, objectionable language, and most character fatalities were altered or eliminated by cutting scenes, dubbing, and explanatory voiceovers for instance, claiming that the city had been evacuated before a battle scene that would show the incidental destruction of buildings and houses, as well as explaining away the destruction of the Earth armies and air forces as being robot tanks and fighter planes. One of the most notable changes in the BOTP adaptation involves the character Keop Jinpei and Gatchaman, who picked up a bizarre verbal ticket of stuttering, chirping, and burbling every time he started to speak. There was a long-standing fan rumor that this was done because the original character spoke using much profanity and that Kiep's excess mouth motion would cover up deleting the words. This was not true, as demonstrated by the existence of an unedited Gatchaman version released by ADV Films in the U.S., in which Kiop rarely if ever used profanity. The in-story explanation for Kiep's unique manner of speech is that he is an artificial life form with a speech impediment because of slightly defective genetic engineering. The main villain, known as Zoltar in BOTP, had an unusual background due to the hermaphroditic nature of the original Berg Katza character. In an episode where Katza's female half was featured, BOTP title, The Galaxy Girls, she was introduced as a separate character, Zoltar's sister, for BOTP. A hint of her actual nature was retained in the name she used when masquerading as a human, Marla Latroz. Latroz is an anagram of Zoltar. To compensate for the other differences, a robot named 7ZARK7 who watched over G Force from their base, Center Neptune performed explanatory voiceovers and light comic relief, which not only padded the time lost from editing but also filled in the gaps in the storyline. This device bears the influence of contemporary Star Wars film, with 7ZARK7 having a visual appearance not dissimilar from R2-D2, and a somewhat camp personality in the style of C-3PO. Notionally, 7ZARK7 ran the undersea monitoring station Center Neptune, from where he received information regarding incoming threats to Earth and relayed that information to G-Force. Zark and other added characters, such as One Rover One, Zark's robotic dog who could hover from one side of the control room to the other by spinning his tail like a propeller, Muttley style, and Susan, the early warning computer whose sultry feminine voice often sent Zark into ecstasy added to the cartoon's youth appeal. 
Some additional footage was also animated showing G-Force members Mark and Princess using their Gatchaman model sheets interacting with Zark, as well putting an image of Mark on a video screen in the control room, helping his addition blend more smoothly into the existing Gatchaman footage although there is a clear difference in quality between the Zark and the Gatchaman animation. Topic. Voice cast Alan Young as 7ZARK7, Keop, additional voices Casey Karzum as Mark, additional voices Ronnie Shell as Jason, regular voice, Tiny, episode 1, additional voices Key Luke as Zoltar, the spirit, Kronos, additional voices Janet Waldo as Princess, Susan, additional voices David Jolliffe as Jason Episode 1, additional voices Alan Oppenheimer as Commander Garok, additional voices William Woodson as the announcer, additional voices Alan Dinehart as Tiny, regular voice, Anderson, additional voices Additional voices provided by Edward Andrews Takeo Fisher Frank Maxwell Wendy Young Topic Episodes Topic TV Movie A TV movie called Battle of the Planets, the movie was made by Gallery International Films and Sandy Frank Film Syndication. David Brett Egan was the voice of 7ZARK7. The movie was combined from several episodes to form a new storyline which contained violence as well as deaths. It was considered for an uncut remake of Battle of the Planets, but was scrapped when plans changed. Sandy Frank began focusing efforts on arranging an uncut dub of Gatchaman instead. Comic <laughs> books <laughs> 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 Battle of the Planets was also released in comic book form, originally by Gold Key Comics, but later revamped by Top Cow Productions. Among the Top Cow comic books was Battle of the Planets, Princess, written by David Wall with art by Wilson Tortosa, released in 2002. A Battle of the Planets comic strip ran in the British TV comic. The TV comic issues which feature the Battle of the Planet strip run from hash 1530, the 17th of April 1981 to hash 1671, the 30th of December 1983. TV comic also reprinted some of the Gold Key stories for two Battle of the Planets holiday specials and one TV comic holiday special. There was also a Battle of the Planets annual which reprinted some of the Gold Key stories. Topic. Soundtrack Battle of the Planets track listing Topic. Character variations Topic. Team variations in different versions Topic. Character variations across different versions Topic. Other notable changes The original Japanese language version of Gatchaman contains a small amount of English. Topic. Reception In the United Kingdom, the show was voted number 42 on Channel 4's 100 Greatest Kids TV Shows in 2001, the show was voted number 62 on 100 Greatest Cartoons in 2004. According to Wizard Magazine, Battle of the Planets is considered to be one of the 100 greatest animated shows. In 2009, IGN ranked BOTP as the 44th greatest animated show of all time in their top 100 list. Topic. Reboot 
Battle of the Planets, Phoenix Ninjas working title is an upcoming animated reboot produced by Nelvana, D. Wrights and Tatsunoko tentatively scheduled for release in 2019. Aimed at 6- to 11-year-old boys, the project was conceived when D. Wrights expressed interest in Nelvana rebooting the franchise after the success the three saw with the second generation of Beyblade. 